Hey, Kid Life, welcome to Camp 2020. I am so excited you guys chose to spend some time with us. I know this looks very, very different than what we normally do for camp in the summer, but I thank you so much that you are diving into the material. I really, really hope that you're having fun going through the booklets and solving all those mysteries and solving all those riddles. It is so much fun, and we had such a blast putting it together. I really hope that it's a blessing to you and your family and that you guys are enjoying it. Uh, right now, this is our first official service of camp. We have two more to go, but this one is day one for our camp services, and I am so excited. This, this message today is called Stand Up. So our theme for camp this year, we're doing our Guess Who camp, as you well know, and we're trying to find some suspects and sort out some clues, but our theme is Stand, and I wanted to take a second to explain what that means to me and how we kind of came up with it when we were talking about this camp. So originally, we had a completely different camp idea. We were talking about doing something very different. I'm not going to spoil it because I think we're still going to do it because it is an incredibly bomb idea. You guys are going to love it. But what we, what we were faced with, what we've all gone through since March, we, we made a decision as a team to, to kind of rethink things and to kind of offer what we have this year to you in a completely different way. Now, I know there's a lot of places that are doing things very differently, and your lives are so different right now, but I want to tell you that God can still work in you. He's still going to do an amazing work in you and in your family, even though things aren't the same as they used to be. It's okay. God can use this time to make a difference in the lives of people. We just have to be open to it. Okay, and the, the theme of the messaging of our, of our camp this year is going to be stand. I want everyone, if you're where you're at, I want you to point at yourself and say stand. Nice job. Well, today we're going to talk about standing up. Standing up, and I have a scripture for you. It's in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. The Bible says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen what a yoke is. Uh, they don't use them too much anymore. You might see them. We have some Amish people in the community that you, sometimes you'll see them using uh, yokes on oxen or on horses as they pull uh, farm implements through the field. But it's just a big, ido a big uh, iron or wooden bar that goes over the neck or the shoulders of an animal, and it kind of binds them together, and then they're hooked to the piece of machinery in the back. It's kind of a cool thing. But what God's saying is when we were born, we were bound just like with a yoke, just like a horse or an oxen is bound to a uh, farm implement for plowing or for, uh, for um, you know, taking up the crops. It's, it, you were bounded to bondage. It's such an incredible thought. But Jesus came to break that yoke. In fact, the Bible says later on that he gave us his yoke instead, which is easy and light. And that, so we're still bound to something, but now we're bound to Jesus. So, you know, we all believe in a lot of things. We all believe in a lot of things. Do you know that every single day when you uh, get up in the morning, so let's say you probably don't set your alarm right now, it's summertime, but let's say that you set your alarm and you wake up and you go, okay, cool, I'm going to get this. Now, what am I going to do? I have to get out of bed, so I have to make a decision to take my blanket and pull it off. Okay, cool. Now I have to decide to swing my legs off the side of the bed, right? And then I have to decide what I'm going to do. Am I going to keep wearing my PJs? Am I going to put my, going to get dressed now? Do I take a shower? Do I go right downstairs for breakfast? Sometimes I know me in the morning because sometimes I'll, I'll exercise in the morning. I brush my teeth when I get up because I don't like that nasty feeling, you know, after you slept all night. And, and if I know I'm not going to eat breakfast for a little bit. And then you walk down the stairs and, or you walk out into the kitchen or, or wherever you have breakfast and you're standing there and you go, okay, cool. So what should I have for breakfast? Sometimes there's a lot of options. Sometimes there's not too many options. Sometimes you don't want anything. But all of those things I just described, which is probably the first five minutes of your day, there are dozens of decisions in that. We make decisions all the time. We make hundreds of decisions a day. And it's a lot of them we don't even have to think about. But it is a decision because when you are brought to a place where you have to choose one thing over another or to act in one way or do something else, 
you, if it's, that decision's not made for you, by let's say your mom or your dad or your aunt and uncle say, no, 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 you're going to eat breakfast now because we made breakfast. Now that's not a decision for you. That decision was made for you, right? That's just what you're doing. But everything else, right down to the smallest things, you make so many decisions a day. And it is kind of an interesting thought because when you decide to do something, you're basing it on what you believe to be right or true. So you're never going to purposely walk into a place where you're going to cause harm to yourself or you're going to uh, hurt somebody else. You're probably not going to do that on purpose. What you're probably going to do is you're going to decide not to do something. But when we look at our decisions, they are based solely on what we believe in our heart or in our mind to be true. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about standing up for what is true and right. Now, we base a lot of those small decisions on our feelings. I feel like eggs for breakfast, or I feel like cereal for breakfast, or, oh, I'd really like pancakes, or I want to have a steak. Oh, I like steak for breakfast. I'm weird. Steak and eggs is the best. If you haven't tried it, try it. But what we would call those things, those guiding things in our mind that help us make decisions we don't really have to think about too much, would be our conscience, our conscience. And our conscience, if you, know, you guys have ever seen the Disney movie, um, uh, Pinocchio, he has the little cricket guy called Jiminy Cricket. And he is, the, is uh, supposed to be the representation of Pinocchio's conscience. And if you've seen the movie, then you know that he doesn't really listen to Jiminy Cricket all that much, and he gets himself into a lot of trouble. And that's kind of the point of the movie, is you have to listen to what you know is right on the inside of you. But did you know that that voice that's coming from the inside of you is actually the Holy Spirit? If you know Jesus, then you, the Holy Spirit is guiding you, and he would be the one that's feeding your conscience with always directing you to try to do the thing that's right and good. Now, sometimes that takes a little bit of cultivation, or we have to develop that skill. We have to tell God, like, God, I, I want to do what's right, but I don't know. Sometimes we hit those places where we're really afraid, and we're going to make the wrong decision. So we have two things happening during any decision. We have the truth or reality. So let's say, for example, I want cereal, and there is cereal, so that's real. I know that that cereal is real. That's truth. That's something I can choose, okay? Okay. But then there's our feelings where I might go, yeah, but I don't feel like cereal. I don't like cereal. That's shredded wheat. That's gross. I don't want shredded wheat. I want cookie crisp. But there's no cookie crisp, so now I'm grossed out, right? That's your feelings. The reality is there is cereal, but your feelings tell you that's not what you want to do. Now, sometimes those things can line up, and they can make you, help, you, help you make a right decision. But, and honestly, we use those to interpret a lot of things. But sometimes your beliefs can be reality and opinion but often they are not. Now, when I was preparing for this camp, my dad had a really cool, um, like, a, like a, a bowler hat or like a, I guess it's a fedora is what it would be called. And you, you'll see uh, the detective wearing it. I lent it to him for the videos. And I had a suit jacket. So uh, they were on a, a hanger. And I was in my bedroom and I hung them up on the uh, window, on the window hanger there. And I didn't take them down right away. So I went to bed one night and this is, this is an example of, of reality versus feelings, okay? So I went to bed, and I am not easily scared, okay? I'm not a person that's jumpy. I'm not a person that gets scared too easy. I love roller coasters. I love these crazy rides that are thrill rides. You know, I, I think they're so fun. So I was sleeping, and I didn't realize that this hat and jacket were hanging on my window, and my neighbor has a light that kind of shines on uh, my, the side of the house where my bedroom is. So I was laying in bed, and then I woke up, and I went to go check on my kids, because I do that at night. And I just kind of woke up. It must have been 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. And it was dark. And I got up, and I took the blanket off, and I swung my legs over, and I looked up, and the, the window was, sh you know, light shining through a little bit. And there was that coat hanging there with the hat on top of the hanger and it looked like somebody was standing in my room wearing a hat and a coat and I freaked out I got so scared I was like whoa I jumped and I, I did everything that I never do in real life because I, I was still kind of tired and but the fact is that the reality was that was still just the coat and hat right but but my feelings in the moment were get away right I wanted to run I wanted to escape because that 
what was my, my initial reaction was not based on truth. The fear reaction that I had or the mild anxiety reaction that I had thinking that someone was in the room was not based on truth. It was based on my brain interpreting something it saw as being something it wasn't. And we do, and you could probably tell me, I mean, I'm sure all of you guys have a story where you walked into the room and somebody jumped out or something happened and you got nervous or scared and it didn't turn out to be sometimes like birthday parties are a great example where your friend's like, hey, come on over. And you're like, okay, cool. And you think you're just going, you know, to hang out and then everybody jumps out and yells happy birthday and you have to go home and change your pants or something. But that's what I, that happens to me. But I know that though, that when I saw that jacket and that hat, I had to, it took me a second. I reacted out of my feelings, out of my reaction. And then my reality was, oh, that's right. And it occurred to me that quickly. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I hung the jacket there. And, I, and then of course I moved the jacket into my closet because I didn't want it to happen again. Um, but that's what reality versus feelings is. Sometimes they add up and you can make an informed decision based on the truth and how the Holy Spirit helps you feel. And sometimes we just react. And those two things don't always add up. And we need to be really, really, really careful with that. So um, when we get to with people, so we decide, okay? We decide what's true and what's right. And we come to church and we learn about Jesus and we learn about God and we learn about the Holy Spirit and we learn about treating each other um, equally and, hum- and that we love one another because Jesus loved us and we celebrate each other and we, and we just, we have the best time and we encourage each other. And that's what we know to be true. But when you go to school or you go to uh, maybe your cousin's house to hang out or a friend's house and they're not a Christian family, they don't hold those same values a lot of the time. And that could be really confusing and frustrating because where we love Jesus with all of our heart and everything that we have, that when we go and are around people that don't share that conviction and share that belief, our truth doesn't match up with their truth, right? Because then their truth, you know, Jesus isn't real. And, and, and we don't, we don't, we, we have a hard time contemplating that. I know sometimes I do. It can be really, really frustrating. So this is the second thing I want to talk about. What happens when people don't believe the same things as you? That can be really frustrating. So I'm going to tell you a story of my son, Caleb. So Caleb, and some of you guys know Caleb. He's my middle son. He's eight. And he loves Jesus. He, he, I didn't have to explain anything to him about Jesus. I didn't have to explain anything to him about the Holy Spirit or about faith or anything. He just got it. He was down. As soon as I said, Jesus came and he died for you on the cross, he died for your sins. He was like, yup, okay, I love it. Let's go. And he's been all about it. He is just in. And he asks really good questions. He, he wants to know God. He wants to know him in a deep and personal way. And I love that about him. And I know a lot of you guys are the same way. You always ask me really good questions. So Caleb is also not bashful about his faith. He has no problem telling all, he goes to public school, and he has no problem telling all the kids on the bus, hey, let me tell you about Jesus, and, and the kid's hurt, and he's like, hey, you know what, let me pray for you. He's all about that, and that's not even me being a pastor and telling him he has to. He just loves the Lord, and he wants everyone to feel the love of Christ just like he does. He is very much what we, like an evangelistic spirit. He wants people to love Jesus and see how much Jesus loves him just like he does. So he has this boy on the bus that, and some kids listen to him, and and he's got a lot of friends and a lot of kids who won't talk to him because of it, and that's reality. But he has one kid on the bus, and he was telling me one day, he said, yeah, dad, this little boy, I I told him he he had a cut on his finger, and I wanted to, I asked him if I could pray for him that Jesus wanted to heal him, and he told me, no, Jesus wasn't real. And when he said that, his face kind of fell, and he was feeling really sad, and I had to tell him, it was, that was a difficult thing to say as a parent. I had to say, you know, son, some people don't believe in Jesus. And no matter how much you tell them, and no matter how much you show them that he loves you, they're not going to listen to you. And, and then I went on to explain to him that a lot of times Christianity is about planting seeds, right? So I said, but what you did do is you planted a really, really good seed in that boy's life by telling him about Jesus and that Jesus loves him enough to heal him. I was like, because he might not believe you now, but maybe because of what you said later on, someone else will say it and it'll click with him. It's like, so you never discount somebody, even if they don't listen to you the first time. And if you have a family member or like a cousin or even a, a real close friend who lives down the block from you or whatever, and they don't receive Jesus like you do, don't worry. Don't be scared. Don't be upset. 
just tell them, it, it, still love them. Tell them that you love them. Tell them it's okay. Get, you know, just, just, just love them with all you have because you don't know that the way that you love them like Jesus did could, get, could bring them around somewhere down the road. And I, I love the fact that all the times that I've ministered all over the country and all over the world, that there were peop, times when I preached and I felt really good and then it just seemed like some people didn't get it. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I know I said what you told me to say, and I know that my heart was in it, and I know that you were there, but why don't these guys get it? And he reminded me, he said, son, oftentimes we're in the seed business. Everyone point at yourself and say, I'm in the seed business. And that's, what we, that's our job. Our job is to, is to take our, our basket, picture a basket full of seed, and, and it's good seed, right? This is seed that is good, and it is going to grow a beautiful plant and a beautiful vegetable, but you have to throw it out, right? And sometimes, and, and Jesus, you know that we've talked about this story in kid life. You know this parable of the sower, where he talks about throwing the seed, and it lands on all different kinds of ground. And some are, has thorns, and some is rocky and doesn't grow, and some is great. And that's our job. Our job is not to decide who is and who isn't worthy of Jesus. It's to give Jesus to everybody and then let the Holy Spirit decide what he's going to do with that good seed that you sowed. And the cool thing about that is, too, is God says that if you sow good seed, he's going to look at you and he's, he loves you. Every single time a new soul comes to God, everybody rejoices and you're included in that, which is really amazing. Sometimes, though, when you get to that place where my Caleb was, and he was so devastated that this boy didn't, didn't know Jesus and didn't have him that he felt like maybe a little doubt was coming in. He said, well, what if that boy's right? I want to read to you Romans 1, chapter 1, and verse 16. The Bible says, I want to preach it. This is the gospel. Because I'm not ashamed of the good news. It is God's power to save everyone who believes. It is meant first for the Jews. It is meant also for the Gentiles. Do you know what that includes? all of us because that's the cool thing about back in the day when jesus was here is there were in in jerusalem and in, in, in israel there were jews who were the devout followers they were born from the line of abraham and they were one of the 12 tribes of israel and then there were gentiles who was basically everybody else everybody else who believed everything they were from africa and and turkey and asia and greece and italy and they were from all over the world they were gentiles Okay, so we live in a world where we try to divide things up more than that. Really, it was just Jews and Gentiles, and that's how this is written. It's for the people that God chose first, and then everybody else. That's what we have to do. We can't be ashamed of what Jesus gave us, kids. We can't be ashamed of the love that we have. Even if people throw it back at us, we have to stand up for what we believe in. We have to tell them it's okay. We love them anyways. We never throw it back in their face and tell them they're wrong or tell them that they're foolish. We could just say, I understand and I pray that someday you're going to get this. And then we can be friends. Encourage them to explore Jesus for themselves. Even if they're not ready, you never know how good the seed is that you're planting. I have one more point to make. You have to stand up for what you believe in. Now, we need to decide in these moments when someone doubts us that we're not going to be persuaded by people. And sometimes those people will gang up on you. You'll get a whole group of kids at school or at, even sometimes at church this kind of stuff happens. And I pray that it doesn't. And you know I'm on the lookout for it. But you never know. When people are gathered, there's going to be people that group together with one way of thinking and they're going to try to persuade you or challenge you or even bully you into, into rejecting what God has. And I want to encourage you, don't do that. Don't run away from God because you have to trust God and stand up for what you believe. Because at the end of the day, it is about your relationship with God and not as much about what other people think. And if you live out loud, out loud for Jesus, unfortunately, there's going to be some difficulty in life. But that's okay. God's with you all the way. Now, it is easier a lot of the time. I've got my beautiful chair here. This right here, this is way easier than standing and pacing around. My legs are off the ground. I'm relaxing a little bit. It feels good. It feels relaxing. But what I need to do in order to move and to deliver the message and even to see my notes is I have to stand up. And sometimes just the action of standing up can seem so difficult. It can seem almost impossible. But I want to encourage you kids that don't sit on the sidelines just because it's easy. Don't live in this chair 
and, and worry about what people think and about upsetting somebody so you're not going to talk about Jesus or you're not going to pray even though you feel inside like you should, even though your conscience, the Holy Spirit inside you is telling you, hey, maybe you should, you know, do something. We're not going to do that. We are going to stand up. Sitting in a chair is okay at times, but sometimes when you're being challenged and, God, and you need to stand up for what you believe in so you can be a testimony to the people around you. Even if they don't receive it, remember, you're sowing really good seed. The key is in your, your response to how they act. Not getting defensive or angry or arguing, but just loving them like Jesus does. That will win them over. What you can do more than that, though, and this helps you inside, and I'm going to get ready to close, is pray. 2 Timothy 4.2 says, Preach the word. Be ready to serve God in good times and bad correct people's mistakes, warn them, encourage them with words of hope. Be very patient as you do these things. Teach them carefully. What the Bible is saying there is never be afraid to share the love that Jesus put in you and the Holy Spirit that lives in you, which makes you feel like you can fly sometimes. Never be afraid to share that and realize that sometimes God's going to make you the only person in a group of people that don't believe in Jesus, and he's going to rely on you to live out loud for him so those people can see the light of Jesus as well. And he promises that when they see the light, that the Holy Spirit, those that, the, the, that receive the seed, the Holy Spirit will grow into a beautiful plant. Always be ready to share the love of Jesus with everyone. All right, guys, we are con going to continue talking about stand in our um, next couple of messages, but I want to pray with you today as you go on about your day so we can have a blessed and amazing day. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for these kids, Lord. I thank you for blessing them with every spiritual blessing in heaven and on earth, Lord. I thank you, Father, that when we get into a position where we have to stand up for our faith, that we are not afraid to do so, that we do it knowing, Father, that in your word, you said that it is our responsibility to stand up and to love. I pray, Lord, that we lead everything that we have, every, in, everything that we get into with people, every uh, circumstance, every encounter, that we lead with love, that we love people like you did, Father, even if they won't believe us, even if they're terrible to us, Lord, help us to love them because you love them too and you died for them on the cross. We thank you for it, Father. I pray your blessing over the rest of this camp, that I pray that the kids have fun, that we enjoy our small groups, Lord, and help our families and our friends grow closer together in this time. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, guys, I hope you have an amazing rest of the day. I will see you again later on.